This is one of, if not the coolest experimental feature I've seen in Blender in a very long time, and I'm so excited to show you why. If you're not actively following Blender's development, that's okay. I'm not either. I happen to see this discussion floating around a little bit, and I'm just so excited to tell you about it because this is something I've been waiting for Blender to have for months. You can go to the link that I will leave in the description and it will take you to this page. You just download this. It's going to download as a zip file, extract it to somewhere. You'll get a folder with contents that look like this and then just run blender.exe. Now, once you're in here to actually turn it on, you're going to have to go to edit preferences, interface, and make sure you have developer extras checked on. Then you'll have this little experimental tab right down here. And then you can click real time compositor. If you just tick this checkbox, we can open up a new side panel here and change it to compositor. Then we can pop into rendered view. Now I already have some stuff set up here, but you won't at first, of course, and we'll talk about that. But first come up to this little menu in the corner here and check use compositor. Now we can start using compositing in our real time viewport renders, which is incredible. Like this is something that other programs have. This is something Octane has had for a very long time, sort of. It's had it's had some of these things, and I have loved it. And I'm so it's just it's just amazing to see it here in Blender. So let's talk about some of why this is so cool. So I will expand this out a little bit, and then I'm actually going to take everything that I have, and you know I won't I won't delete it exactly, but we're just gonna move it down here so it's out of the way. Now we just want to make sure that our image from our render layers is plugged into our composite and check this out. All right, right now it looks like a normal render. It's performing normally and whatnot, but watch what happens if we add in, say, a blur node, and we plug it in right here. We bring this up, we are blurring our viewport. And then as we navigate around, we can see that it's blurring the render after it's been rendered. Now we obviously have full control over the node as per usual. So like maybe you want to create uh, maybe that's a bit a bit much. Blender doesn't seem to like that. Maybe you want to make like you know a uh, a glow a glow effect. So what you can do is you can just blur it, you know, some amount. Add in a mix shader, set to add, and just add add the blur and the original image together. And then you've got you know a glow effect. Now obviously we'll want to bring down the intensity. And we can do this a couple of times. Like if we do, if we do a really tight glow effect, so you can see we've got, we've got a bit of glow. It's not like, it's not like super apparent, but that's okay. Cause it's not always going to be in some angles. Like here, you can see that tight little glow. Then maybe just because, just because I want to make something more interesting, we'll maybe duplicate this again, plug this into both slots, plug that into the output. Maybe this one can be like 50. Maybe even a little bit more than that. And then we'll duplicate it one more time. And we'll just increase that to something bigger. You don't want it to be too big because the bigger you go, the the slower it gets. So you can see it's already getting pretty slow. So maybe like 50, 100, and 250 will be fine for now. Now this feature seems like something kind of small if you look at it analytically on the surface, but it's actually really, really great for making creative decisions. It's the same thing behind like denoising in RTX cards. It allows you to make creative decisions faster because you can see how the final result is gonna lay down a whole lot better. Now, I don't actually use the Blender Compositor all that much anymore for my compositing. I do a lot of it in Blackmagic Fusion, but this still gives me a much better preview of what that's gonna look like. And let me show you one of the examples of how. Glowing materials, emissive materials like these engines here, you don't actually get a good frame of reference for how bright that is without any kind of post-processing or glow effects. All right, if we just turn all of this off, select it and hit M, like it's white. You know, we can we can get an idea because we can see how much it's illuminating everything else, but the actual material itself is white. Like there's no way to tell how bright it is just by looking at it. Unless, of course, you have bright glow effects, which gives an indication to the fact that it's really bright. We can see that like better visually represented. Now this whole update is gnarly and not every node is supported. That's kind of like, that's kind of the one caveat to this. So there are some nodes like the glare node that you can see even by having it exist, suddenly our viewport compositing turns off. And you can see it says here, if we turn on our overlays, it gives us an error and says that the compositor node tree doesn't support this node. So all we have to do is make sure that it doesn't exist at all and it won't interfere. But there's some cool nodes that do work, like lens distortion. So 
you want to have some crazy distortion to your image or dispersion maybe we'll set this to projector or we'll set this to fit we can have some crazy chromatic aberration effects I mean, check it out. We're getting this like we're getting this real time in the viewport, which is just I mean, seriously, that is so cool. Let's see what else. Let's see what else works. Hue correct. Hue correct works. If we go hue saturation value, this is the note I want. I want to try something. OK, bear with me. We're going to try a little experiment. I want to change the color of the dispersion. We're going to try something really quick. I'm just going to bring down the hue here and then bring it up there. Oh, oh, that's kind of crazy. So it's kind of done what I wanted it to do, which is like the original colors have returned. We can see that that's blue. But like, look at what it's done to the chromatic aberration. Anyway, so that's just a fun effect. It kind of makes it look retro-y. Actually, let's try something else. Check it out. Blur it by like five pixels. And then the filter node works as well. So we can set it to, uh, to let's say, box sharpen. Then when we turn that up, we get this almost like, VHS-esque look. It's not quite full on VHS. We're still mix, missing some of the aspects, but like we can we can add in, say, um, an RGB curves, and just bring up that floor, bring up that black value just a bit, you know, and check it out. I mean, like, again, this is like, it's just cool. It's just plain awesome. And these are the kinds of updates that I really like to see. Now we're gonna go ahead and save that, and I want to open up another project of mine. I'm going to see, hopefully it works. We're going to cross our fingers because I know that there was one thing that I had installed in my normal install of Blender that I don't have installed here, but I don't think it should cause a huge issue. All right. It caused an issue. So the colors don't look quite right. Um, for what it is all of like, everything is very orange, but that's okay because we have our real time compositing. So we're just going to open up. Well, if we just, we'll just, we're just going to ignore this 3d view. We'll actually zoom out so we don't see anything. Let's bring up a compositor window and hit use nodes just like before. And of course we want to click use compositor. Now in here, we can obviously, we can take the hue saturation value node. So we can see this maybe a little bit more accurate to how we actually want it to look. This is, this doesn't look quite right. There are a lot of things going wrong here, but bear with me. There'll be a separate tutorial by the way, on how to do an environment like this. Then we'll again, we'll add in a blur effect, a mix node, set it to add. And then again, bring down that intensity. This is one of the features that I've been wanting Blender to have for a very long time. And to see that we're actually getting something akin to it now is honestly incredible. Wanting to see, wanting to be able to have effects like bloom inside of cycles and chromatic aberration in different kinds of lens flaring and everything. And it's just, it's just really amazing. We're going to add this lens distort node again, bring up this version. I'm actually going to bring in a mix node. So I want maybe some of that, but not all of it. So, and again, this isn't necessarily what I would do for a, for a final render, but it sure is great for, uh, for when you're previewing and when you're working on your scene, because suddenly you have a context for how everything is going to look. Like when you see this bright glowing lava, you have a context for how bright that's going to be like, and we can see if we flip back before and after just the difference that that's making. There's another thing though, that I haven't exactly seen anybody talk about yet. And we're about to find out live whether or not it works. This is an idea that I was having earlier. We're going to try it out. And if it works, it's really cool. So we're going to come down to this layer or to this tab right here. This is the view layer properties. And we're just going to turn on all of these things just because we want to play around with them. So let's see if we plug the diffuse direct into the image. Oops. If we plug the diffuse direct into the image, do we get the diffu diffuse direct? Mm, I don't think it's working. No, it doesn't seem to be working. I hope I hope at some point they add this in the future. And that's okay. This is a relatively new feature. People are only just beginning to talk about it. So if any Blender devs happen across this video, um, that is something that I would like to see added because I have a couple of ideas. Now, this feature is great and it's coming along really nicely. But if you want to see an example of really nice comps being created with the Blender compositor, then you can go to this video right here where you can see some really cool techniques using a special tool built just for compositing in Blender that is really going to take your renders to the next level. I highly suggest it. Go check it out.